we seem to have a minor problem. According to the letter we received from His Excellency the Governor, we expected somebody called Rispa Kechep Konga. But the person appearing before us is Rispa Kimboy Kipturko. Yes, Chair, I can explain that. I am married. I have a marriage certificate and affidavit to show that Rispa Chepwonga is the same person as Rispa Kipturgo. Can let's have that affidavit? Honorable members, I wish to bring to attention that we do have an affidavit sworn by Rispa Kimboy Kipturko of ID number this that confirms that the name Rispa Kimboy Kipturko and Rispa Chepkonga refers to one and the same person who is before us this morning. And as such, I want to direct the clerk to administer an oath. Rispa is our tradition and this house of tradition, any person who appears before us has to take an oath or an affirmation before you can engage. Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Rispa Chepkonga do swear that the information that I will give to this committee is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Honorable members, I wish to confirm that the candidate has already taken an oath and we are free to engage her. Honorable members, before us this morning is Rispa Jake Turko or Rispa K. Chepkonga. She is the nominee for agriculture, livestock, and fisheries. Rispa, you will have one hour to engage with these members. We expect you to help us manage, manage time. Rispa, this is, this, sorry, which name do you prefer us to call you? Because you have almost four or five names. Uh, I prefer, Chair, yeah, to be called Rispa Chepkonga. Rispa? Chepkonga. Rispa Chepkonga. Yes. So, let's just give us one name. Rispa or, Chepkonga, or Ms. Chepkonga, Mrs. Chepkonga? Rispa or Mrs. Chepkonga? I think the convenient one, Rispa and Chepkonga sounds musical, so if you use both, it's okay to meet you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we can use RISPA or Mrs. Chepkonga, depending for the purpose of this committee. RISPA, before you this morning, is the committee of appointment of Baringo County Assembly. It draws its mandate from the Constitution of Kenya, Section 7 of the Public Appointments, County Assembly's Approvals Act Number 5 of 2017, and Baringo Assembly Standing Order Number 190, 
which mandates this committee to test the suitability of any person who has been nominated by His Excellency the Governor. This committee is chaired by myself, Vincent Kimboy, as the speaker. And we have 11 members. We now have 10 because one of, one of us is, is an available today for this session. I'll give the members to do a self-introduction. We can do a left, we can start on the left side. Yes, uh, good morning, Rispa. Good morning, sir. Yeah, my name is Andre Pokebruta Kamosop, a member of this committee, the Deputy Speaker, Baringo County Assembly, and also representing the people of Mochongoi Ward. Pleasure to know you, sir. Uh, morning, Rispa Chepkonga. Good morning. You sir. say it, it, it sounds musical. Very right. It touches my heart. Thank you. Very <laughs> Thank <much>. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my name is Ernest Kibet, uh, MCA Cabernet, the majority whip, and also uh, the member to this committee. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Rispa Chepkonga. My name is Ayub Kibet, member of County Assembly, representing our Lel Chap Chap Ward, and I'm also a member of this committee. Thank you, sir. Pleasure Welcome. to know you. Good morning, Riz Pachap Konga. Thank you. I am Jane Cherob, nominated MCA, Barinko County. Welcome to this panel. Thank you, Mashibio. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> And I'm Mailu Shedrak, MCA Tangube Korosi Ward, member of this committee. Thank you, sir. Pleasure to know you. Thank you, Chair. My name is Max Yalo, MCA Mogoti Ward. Karib. Pleasure to know you, sir. Uh, good morning, Rispa Chepkonga. Um, Lolgisoi Paul, MCA Mogutani Ward, um, a member of this committee. Welcome. Good morning, Rispa. Um, Honorable Venalin Jerob, a nominated MCA Baringo County, and a member of this committee. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. I am Honorable Joshua Locorio, MCA Barwesa, Deputy Majority Leader, and a member of this committee. Thank you, Mashimu. Good morning, Madam Rispa. I'm Mwishimwala Talam, MCA Lembus Queen, and the Majority Leader Baringo County Assembly, also a member of this committee. But I'm much familiar, more familiar with the name Kipturgo than Chef Konga. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Honorable Lawi, do you want to declare some interest? <laughs> no, Lawi needs to declare conflict of interest because he seems to know Kipturgo. <laughs> with us here is also our clerk. I'll give an opportunity to introduce herself and the members of staff present. Thank you, Chair. My name is Winnie Chemase, the clerk, Baringo County Assembly. Uh, we have the staff, members of staff. Uh, the far left, we have Zipora Koroti, the Hansard editor. We have Betty Toroitich, head of legal. We have Emma Kemei, the head of ICT, we have Henry Tekewa, the head of research, we have Tobole, uh, the surgeon at arms, we have Bernardine Capcoyo, uh, the surgeon at arms, and then we have the cameraman, uh, Karanja. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you I think much. we have uh, Tuikong somewhere. Yes, we have uh, Tuikong, the head of communication. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we have uh, Kiptum at the back. We have Kiptum Jonathan, uh, our 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 clerk assistant. Thank you. With us here is also Douglas Kiplimo, who is the last officer between the account assembly and the executive. We also have members of the public and members of the press here.
RISPA, when we placed a notice in the newspapers, we requested you to come with some original documents. Do you have them with you? I do, sir. Can I learn it over to Mr. Topole? You will be able to hand them back to you at the end of this session. Do you have a valid care tax compliance? Chair, I do. Do you have a valid higher education loan spot clearance? Chair, I do. Do you have a valid ESCC clearance? Chair, I do. Do you have a valid certificate of good conduct? Rispa, you have to respond because it's, record, it's recording the answer. You can see that we have something here. It's our answer because whenever there's an issue, we we'll love to go back to this one. So you have to be audible enough. Chair, I have answered. I think this thing is a bit heavy on me. Uh, is it because of my height or something? <laughs> <laughs> Chair, I do. Do you have a valid clearance certificate from a reputable credit reference bureau? Thank you. We shall have a look at them, and in case of any clarification, we shall call upon you to, to respond. Thank you, Chair. Have you been charged and convicted in a court of law? No, Chair. Are you a dual citizen? No, Chair. When you came to the assembly, you filled a questionnaire. Yes, Chair. Allow me to take you through that questionnaire. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Two issues that I need clarification from yourself. You did not indicate your current Salary. Let's know how much are you earning currently in terms of monthly salary or your current monthly income. Chair, I earn 300,000. Is it 300,000 flat or 300 and something? Um, 300 and something, yes, but it's 300,000 average. Cross or net? Uh, cross. Cross income of 300,000 yes. per month. Do you have another income? I am a farmer. Yes. Um, I farm uh, coffee. I uh, farm uh, mangoes. I'm also a dairy farmer. Yes, Chair. Okay. Let's go to your net worth. We told you to state your net worth. However, you gave us a block figure. You did not give us a breakdown. How much are you worth? Uh, I'm worth uh, 71.8 million, and uh, this is together with family. It's not uh, alone. Uh, that is family net worth. Sorry, is it family or yourself? Because it's family. Now let's get to know how much is risk per worth. We don't want the family. Um, okay, that's a bit difficult to quantify because I gave you my marriage certificate, and most of the things that we've acquired, we have acquired as a team, and that is allowed chair. Then is, if that's the case, then kind of let's you give us a breakdown of the 71.8 million. Uh, we have a home in Nairobi. We have a farm in Kitale. Sorry, tell us a home in Nairobi and find you how much so that members can be able to record the same. Okay. Uh, we have an apartment in Nairobi worth uh, 10 million. We have a farm in Kitale. Um, um, how many acres? Uh, that is about seven acres. If you average it as uh, five million per acre, because it's almost within the municipality. Uh, we have coffee, about three acres. Where? In Kitale. Yes. Uh, we have dairy. Value that much the coffee? Uh, this is three acres, valued like uh, three million shillings. That takes nine million. Yes. We have uh, dairy, as I've said. Uh, is it the dairy kettle or the dairy? The dairy? You have a dairy? It's the, the kettle. Value how much? Uh, that will be five animals worth like 200,000 per animal. We do maize farming yes. where we lease the farm. So our income from the maize is uh, a million shillings. Yes. 
We also have the home. If we value the home, that will be like 10 million. How much? 10 million. We have a farm here in, at home, Baringo. Uh, that's in Baringo? Uh, Barwesa. Yes. By the way, I have another home in Kibingeon, which I was shown like Moses. That, that is the home. So when the security is safe enough, I'll be there. And the value is enormous because it is a land I saw through my eyes. And I'm really longing to be there. <laughs> <laughs> the, how much is the value of the home in Parwesa? <laughs> so the Parwesa one is about five million. Five million. Yes. Is that all, or you still have others? Uh, that is all. We also have vehicles. May I not forget? We have three vehicles. That's yeah. worth about four million. Yes. That's all. That's all. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think that she mentioned something about Kibengeon and the land she's, she's just been shown from far. Is it the same that uh, there was an issue? Um, the issue is insecurity. Uh, yeah. our, our members of staff, can you confirm if the, the figures tally 71.8? It is 71.8, sir. We have technical stuff. I don't know mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are telling me I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's the requirement. That, that the speaker does not know how to calculate. And that's why he has to have technical people with him. Thank you, Chair. Yes. It's okay, I understand you're what 74 million, not 71.8. Maybe I overestimated the keeping on one because I don't know the value yet, sir. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Rispa. We will kindly, members will ask you questions, and it's expected that you will answer the questions through the chair. And because members are, these are seasoned members, they know that they will ask questions through the chair. We also expect you to be precise and to the point. We also expect you to be honest in answering all questions. We also expect members to declare conflict of interest as per section 12 of the Public Officer Ethics Act 2012. Risk by its worth to know that we requested members of public to present memorandums or affidavits from the public on your nomination, but we did not receive any. However, these members of this committee live within the community. And as they live within the community, they also have ears and eyes. And one of the things that happened immediately after the nomination is that we saw some demonstrations in Bartabwa. And some people in Bartabwa called a press conference and they disowned you. They said, they said you don't come from Bartabwa. What do you have to say about that? Chair, that is very interesting because I was born there, I've been married there. So by making such kind of an observation, it means even the men there are disowning all the wives they've married from that area. Um, I did go for an engagement on Saturday and uh, what they were saying is they were agitating for more jobs and they were even shy to look at me in the eye. So that's what I would say. Is it possible that you are not engaged in community activity so that, they, so that in as much as you are, you are born in Partabwa, you have lived two quarters of your life in Kitala, so that you, are, you, don't, you have not had an opportunity to engage with the members of the community? I have engaged through uh, fundraising chair, uh, church community, uh, because whenever they call for help chair, they expect to receive money. And if I were within the locality, maybe I would not have that ability to assist as much as I have done. Chair, I've also taken children through to school from the same locality. So when people have um, a desire to get more jobs, they can say anything, Chair. You know that. Thank you, Rispa. We will not be labor on that because if they were serious, they ought to have written a memoranda or an objection. They ought to have filed an objection. It's only that we wanted the members of the public to know that 
in as much as we have ears and eyes, they also have a responsibility of filing memorandums or objections if they have an issue. And I'm happy that the, this proceedings is live. And all members of public from Baringo County ought to know that if they have an objection to an individual being nominated, they should be proactive, file memorandums or objections or an affidavit so that we will be able to engage it further. And because of that, I leave it there. I'll take your response to be the gospel truth because I don't have anything else contrary. Chair, may I add also that... No, uh, Respa, yes, you, I'll, I'll not allow you to, to, add, anything. to, to add anything. Thank you, that. sir. Respa, can you tell us about yourself in uh, three minutes? Uh, Chair, um, I'm Respa, Chep Konga, uh, born and raised here in Baringo. And mainly we went, I went to school in Solian, Solian Primary. My father, whom uh, Moshimiwa knows very well, uh, and he didn't declare any interest or any objection, uh, considered school uh, that you look for a school like you're looking for first year. If the school was good, then the children have an opportunity of succeeding in that very primary school. So my father had uh, six homes, and all the children, all our siblings, we went to one primary school. And I appreciated that. So my formative years were very rigorous in terms of training because my father was also a livestock trader. He would buy livestock from uh, East Baringo, and we would fatten them around Kabimoy and uh, load them to the work on, at uh, Sabatia uh, Railway Station to go to KMC. I also, he was also a farmer, because then we used to have uh, the shamba system in Sabatia. So he would buy maize from Sabatia and meal at Kipsaraman, and as the children would be the one measuring out the unga, to the traders in all those markets. Uh, and one interesting fact that I saw is that if you were to press down the unga, you would get less money. And we had a clerk, one of my brothers, he would say, if you are generous, then you remain home. Because then if you bring less money out of the unga, yet we've milled and transported. And you remember those days, uh, the roads were very bad. So that, those were my formative years, farming, uh, taking care of livestock, and going in all those homes that my father had. So really, I am from Baringo all over because that is the training that my father did. And after that, I went to Kapropita uh, Secondary School for my years, which I did very well. And uh, I went to Egerton uh, University, and it was Egerton College at that time, where I did agriculture, a diploma in agriculture and home economics, at three and a half years, which was very rigorous. Because one of the duties that we were doing is to perform livestock duties, waking up at 10 a.m. to go and milk the cows, looking after goats and sheep, uh, looking after the poultry, uh, managing a farm, and also staying in a home economics house where we were supposed to train as hosts, uh, hosting uh, fellow students so that they can rate us, and also being trained as an extension officer. Out of that, out of that course, I was able to be interned at uh, Maseno, uh, community where I did as an extension officer. Um, after that, I had done some work with the Kenya Seed in Nakuru as a student during the long vacation. So after my training, I went back and I said, uh, may I get a job? And they took me. And so for my career, I've been at Kenya Seed. So Kenya Seed has two companies. We have Kenya Seed in Kitale and Simlo Seeds in Nairobi. And I've worked in both. I've uh, worked in Kitale for 15 years and I've worked uh, uh, 10 years in similar seeds. These years I've worked with farmers because Kenya seed is about producing seed and marketing. My aspect has been to market seed to the farmers and to the rest of Kenya. I rose from being uh, in charge of sales at the counter, being a senior sales representative, and right currently I am in charge of uh, marketing, sales and marketing at Simlo Seeds. And the head office for Simlo is at Nairobi, uh, my main task is to work with organizations, which are the counties, uh, stakeholders, and also uh, to look for external markets for the seed. I say also I've been able to train when I was in Kitale in marketing, Kitale Technical, because I saw the work that I was doing as a distribution manager required that I get to know the acro dealers and get to know the kind of businesses that they do. Uh, one aspect that I realize also, when the farmers produce their crops, the main challenge for every farmer is the market. And one aspect that led me to uh, do marketing and really focus on it is because the three-year course was so intensive in terms of agriculture, I needed to now manage the other aspect of after the crop production, where do the crops go to, and that was marketing. 
So I did my uh, diploma in marketing, and then I also did a BSc, bachelor's in uh, business management and marketing option. I have an MSc in marketing, focusing on marketing research. Um, I had an opportunity to be interned in South Africa for that marketing uh, and marketing research, uh, just to find out and have focused discussion groups among the farmers in South Africa, and also to pitch with the organization where they were uh, seeking to do consultancy farm. In South Africa, I was trained by growth from knowledge. Uh, while at Kenya Seed, I had an opportunity to train in Israel, uh, a six-week course focused Kindly on wind agriculture. Up, wind up. Thank you, Chair. I want to say I had a very uh, good training, an opportunity that I really thank God for, because in every stage of my career, I took to improve myself and train and to understand the kind of work that was before me. Thank you, Chair. At this moment, I would love to ask Honorable Kimosop to ask his question, then Honorable Lokorio to ask a question, then you answer the two, que you answer the two sets of questions thereafter. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine is on suitability, basically. Um, by now, of course, you must have taken time to understand what your role should be when you become the CC. In, in line with uh, you know the provisions of the law and the budgeting and the functions that you will be doing as a CC, what makes you think that you are suitable for that uh, position? And what what are you bringing uh, to that position that we expect as Paringo to benefit from? Thank you, uh, Chair. I think you say that you will you will answer okay. both oh. both questions. So I'll, I'll go to my uh, to my second question, which is whether you are aware uh, that uh, parts of Baringo um, partner with Kenya Seed to, to plant uh, the seeds. Whether you are aware, and if you are aware, which parts of Baringo exactly. And um, if you become the CC and with your partnership with Kenya Seed, what would be your advice? Do, you, do, you, do we improve on the partnership and increase uh, the areas that uh, Kenya Seed is partnering, or what would be your advice specifically? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Karibu, and uh, I have two questions. And before the questions, I want to declare that uh, I have no interest. My father and your late father were only tradesmen, and that is the only as <laughs> they used to buy. And uh, clearly, I come from Barueza, and you come from Now, Rispa, the question is, tell us about your academic qualifications and the professional qualifications, and relate your qualifications to the job that you have been earmarked for, if you will be uh, cleared to take up the position. Thank you so much, Emma. Maybe, Chair, out of curiosity, in this in this conflict of interest thing, eh? uh, Rispa, are you in any case a sister to Jane Kipturko? Jane Kipturko? Yes. Yes, Chair, that's my sister. Who was in Baringo High School? Yes, Chair. Yeah, she was my classmate. <laughs> <laughs> But I, but I, but <laughs> other than members, at some point we'll have to remove Lawi, we'll have to remove Lokorio, and Honorable Kimoso. They seem to have conflict of interest. <laughs> proceed, Ken. Uh, sorry, proceed, uh, Rispa. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate that they know members of my family. Uh, it means we have a common ground. That I really appreciate. So to answer the first question, Chair, the suitability, my suitability to the job that I've been uh, nominated for is that I have 30 years of experience working with Kenya Seed Company. The training that I have received has equipped me with the skills and knowledge that I will need when uh, discharging my duties as the CEC Agriculture. Working with Kenya Seed has enabled me to know so many parts of this country and especially home, because wherever I was, my passion has been home. 
because this is where I, someone said that you you know belonging to Baringo you belong up to the bone marrow that is true I belong up to the bone marrow um, we do seed at Marigat and uh, actually my MD said Rispa we would hold the meeting until you are you know appointed so that we can have a meeting with the farmers in Marigat to enhance and even have a better working uh, uh, common front to increase production and take advantage of the farm that is there. To go to my second question, Chair, um, that I state my academic qualifications. I have an MSc in marketing with focus in marketing research. I have a diploma in agriculture and home economics which relates to extension because I'm trained as an extension officer. I have a diploma in uh, marketing, that is business ma management and marketing. I have another diploma in psychological counseling. I, of course, I realize as a leader, I need to understand my people and I trained on that. Uh, I also have a BSc in business management and marketing. I have undertaken various courses in management I've also been trained in Israel, as I stated earlier on, on agriculture. I am also an ISO auditor, a management system that Simlo and Kenya Seed are implementing in managing uh, the programs and the, uh, to map up on the progress in the, in the company. Chair, I have completed. At this point, allow me to request Honorable Olkisoi and Honorable Lawi, let me take three Honorable Olkisoy, Lawi, and my look to ask their questions. But before that, you spoke about partnership with Kenya Seed Company. On Monday this week, His Excellency the Governor, Benjamin Cheboy, launched an education scheme in Barwesa, Kiboy Education Scheme, in a village called Kaption. I'm just wondering whether as part of increasing partnership within Kenya Seed and Baringo County, is it possible you also enlist the farmers in Kiboy and the former Barwesa education scheme? Because they, there's an old education scheme that was started by colonialists in Barwesa, and I don't think Kenya Seed has also done anything much in that area. Chair, may I answer no, that? No, you will answer all the questions okay, okay. once they are through. Honorable Olkisoy. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Ms. Rispa Chepkonga, uh, you know you said it sounds uh, musical yes, and sir. it is a good one if I call like that. If approved uh, by this uh, panel and finally approved by uh, the whole house, uh, you will be um, CC in charge of agriculture, livestock and fisheries. Uh, to us, pastoralists, if we look at somebody in charge of livestock and we just wonder, is this person aware of that this is our bank, this is our moving bank, and then the person in, char or in charge of fisheries, those ones who are doing uh, fishing and all that pertains to the lake, uh, are they looking, how are they looking at you and what is your contribution? Uh, if I go to... Um, I wanted you to outline to us five strategic priority uh, areas for that department in terms of agriculture, livestock, and fisheries. Uh, I thank uh, you because you said you know uh, a scheme in Marigat, a precarious irrigation scheme that you are dealing with when you are in uh, Kenya Seed Company. Maybe in line to that, while you are outlining your strategies that you will apply. Maybe you can shed some light on challenges that you are facing. You faced while you are in seed company and recurrent education scheme and all other schemes within Baringo. Uh, the second question. Um, you will be uh, in charge of this docket. A huge task ahead of you. Uh, maybe briefly you can describe to us uh, the procedures you apply while doing uh, procurement uh, services. Thank you, Chair. Uh, 
Thank you, Chair. I'd like to ask Madam Respa if we can outline the budget process. Budget process. And what are the roles of the county assembly in, in budget making process? Secondly, secondly, I'd like to tell her to outline the functions of the county government agricultural sector as described in the fourth schedule part two of the Constitution of Kenya, 2010. Thank you, Chair. Rispa, Rispa Chepkonga. Yes, Mashima. Uh, my question goes to I want you to explain four critical plans that outline the county planning framework. And secondly, explain. Sorry, come again. Uh, I'm saying explain four critical plans huh, that outline the county planning framework. Uh, secondly, uh, tell us your vision for the Department of Agriculture in the next three years. Keeping in mind that uh, in Baringo County, we have the lowlands and the highlands. The lowlands experience, uh, it's a semi-arid semi -arid areas and the islands are the highlands. Do experience a good uh, amount of rainfall annually. So, tell us your vision concerning those uh, those places, the two places, mainly on livestock, fisheries, dairy farming, and even crop farming. And your main strategy, one main strategy, to achieve that same, uh, same vision. Thank you. You can answer the, th the questions from the three members. Thank you, Chair. Um, may I also request, Chair, maybe, maybe from two members, because I see it's quite a lot, and uh, the mind can get clocked up. Livestock and, fish, and fisheries, so that three departments. So, if we were to take questions from one member, two members at that time, we take more time. So, you'll be able to, you, I'm sure, you have the capacity to record and answer them. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate that is a wide uh, docket. And, uh, Chair, there was a question on uh, the aspect of pastoralists. Um, the strategic and the challenges that come in with that. And I would want to say when I introduced myself, I said my father was a trader, buying livestock, fattening and selling to KMC. And so that is uh, an aspect that is so pertinent to my heart. Uh, you said mobile uh, banks, life mobile banks. And so that is the strategy that I would say for pastoralists, we need to look at... Uh, receding our pasture field to ensure that these livestock that move about do not lose their strength when they are looking for water and pasture. Fatten them and uh, they are also a beauty to look at. So as communities, because uh, we need to conserve the pasture and store that pasture when you have a store in your home for food, even the livestock. My father used to say they are his relatives. And so the livestock are also my relatives. So they need to have a store where there is the pasture stored for them. Um, there is also the irrigation scheme, and you talked about the challenges the seed company has. The seed company, just like any other farmer, really has to rely on irrigation. In the year 1995, when there was a drought in 1994, we had an issue or a challenge because we didn't have enough seed for the country. And that's why when we sat as um, a top management team at that time, whom I was part of, we suggested that we come to the Perkera irrigation scheme. And after the training, we've left, we've remained there because the farmers are very cooperative. They are more organized than any other scheme. And maybe I could answer that together with the one of Kiboy and the other irrigation scheme. Last, 
uh, early this year we sat down also looking at the other irrigation scheme and we went round. I visited KVDA, I visited NIB, looking for these farms because where they are managed by any, uh, NIB, it's not only here in Baringo but in other areas also. And we are looking at the suitable crops that can be grown in those areas. And for Kiboy, we are already testing beans. Actually, they are at flowering stage. I took them there and I went there again over on Saturday to examine how they are performing. Uh, so for any crop husbandry, it requires the farmer really to monitor how the crops are doing, making sure that there is enough water. So I'm really excited that the dam uh, has been commissioned now for the construction, because water has been a challenge in that Kiboy and Barwesa irrigation scheme. We also know that there is Tilingwa and then there is uh, Koloa. These are areas that would open up for crop production or seed production, because we don't only market in Kenya, we market all over uh, the East African region and beyond. So there's that need, a lot of need for irrigated areas to do crop production. Uh, you also asked about uh, the procedures uh, on procurement. Um, I said that uh, for procurement, we need to have the need analysis first. What is it that we want to uh, procure? And that would arise from uh, uh, the public participation in identifying the areas that we need. and the plans that we want to, uh, to implement, consolidating this so that uh, when we have uh, both from the livestock, from the crops and the fisheries, we consolidate them and present to the assembly so that they can approve. Because the assembly is the one that approves uh, these procurement plans and also the budgets at the same time. Um, the other question was, uh, Chair, uh, that outlined the, the budget. Uh, and the role of uh, the county assembly. I would say the county assembly approves the budgets. Mm -hmm. And uh, the budget process begins when the year actually begins in the month of June. Uh, having done the process maybe from September looking at the budgets and having the budgets consolidated so that they are approved. Because if the budget is approved, then even in terms of procuring can be now done fast enough because the allocation of the budget would go into whatever has been uh, 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 that arose from the need analysis so that the budget can be allocated to those uh, requirements. Um, the, the other question is that outline uh, the fourth schedule part two of the county uh, government. I would say agriculture is a devolved function and the role of agriculture is uh, to manage uh, the pro uh, crop production and productivity, that is uh, the crop and animal last country. Uh, we also do the control of diseases as a county, because when you do the crop and animal last country, then you have to control the diseases that arise from it. Uh, and part of it is maybe purchasing of the acaricides to make sure that the animals are well taken care of. There's also the aspect of food safety and food security. When you talk about food security, you want to have food that is also secure. We know there are many other chemicals that are used nowadays to control diseases on the farm, but they have to be uh, safe enough for the human consumption. Uh, there is also the management of the apatos because we are dealing with livestock, and Baringo is well known for the livestock uh, management, livestock uh, breeding that is both dairy and beef. So the management of the apatos. Also, the management of uh, the, the cell, the cell uh, yards, the cattle auction. And I was really privileged to meet uh, a, a retired auctioneer, uh, Cheruyot, in one of uh, functions in the village, uh, where he was negotiating on behalf of the team that we had gone. We were the Cap Sunday and the others were, you know, like, he negotiated really very high for them to get the livestock on the other side. Yes, that is the area on the fourth schedule that the county management is able to, to do on the part of the agriculture. Um, uh, let me start on my vision for the three years uh, for the department. Um, one of my friends, where they know I'd been nominated for this post, requested me that in 1928 chair, there was drought here in Baringo, and porters were dispatched from Wasingishu to walk down the hill to bring uh, food to the starving Tugans. My vision for the three years, together with the stakeholders and even the county assemblies, to ensure the same road that was used to bring down food is the same road that we use now to take food up and use the airport at uh, Wasingishu Eldoret and export our produce. 
Because from that time until now, we have better technologies. We have more education learned. We have more knowledge in terms of the weather patterns. And so food security should be the number one priority that I would want to look at. And I would say in terms of... Thank you, thank you, Rispa. I think you have answered the question. Let's go to the next set of questions. And I'll call upon Honorable Ayub, Honorable Ernest Kibet, and Honorable Chen Cherov to take the next set of questions. Time is not on our side, Honorable Members. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to ask you two questions. From your CV, you've been a member of the Marketing Society of Kenya on agricultural products. How will you apply your skill to contribute the marketing of Baringo honey, coffee, and the goat meat, both locally and international market? Second question. In the recent past, here in Baringo County, we've been facing major problems of food shortages in most parts. Kindly outline the measures you will put in place to ensure that the county is food secure. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Rispa Chepkong. <coughs> My question is about uh, project implementation. Uh, it is a big challenge uh, in the department, as you are aware, uh, that uh, the agriculture department is receiving a lot of budgetary allocation. So, kindly highlight measures that you will put in place to avert that situation where we have rollovers and, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, my second question would be: uh, briefly highlight key drivers you would implement as CEC to enhance the internal control in the department for efficient and effective service delivery. Uh, having listened to you, uh, you've had a very, uh, a very big wide experience. So you could easily tell us how you can easily. Then my final question uh, is, uh, what areas of investment in the agricultural sector can you identify in the county which remain untapped and which investors uh, local and national or external would you target as a matter of priority? I think uh, you've really given me a very uh, a very good concept. You know, I come from Kiboino here and uh, those people who used to go to almost all of my aunts are married to Keio just because they had gone there to look for food and uh, bring back to our place. So I wish that would happen, then we bring back those ladies now to come to Tugen. I think uh, that was good for me to hear. Thank you. Honorable Ernest, there's a, there's a novel called Encounters from Africa. And it talks about there's a lady who no one knows when she was born because she knows all the stories from 1900 to, to death. You seem to be the one because you seem to know the stories of 1928. <laughs> Proceed, this way you can answer the questions. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, sorry, we still have a question from Jen. I have three questions to ask. One, I like communication strategies that you shall use to for the effective communication in the Department of Agriculture, both international and external. You are nomination, if your nomination has been approved by this committee. The second question is. How shall you be communicating with staff in the department, ZECs in other departments, their person of agriculture, livestock, and fisheries in the county assembly, and the governor? Three, briefly, I like the scenario where horizontal and vertical communication and act are used in agriculture as a department. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. That's all. 
Thank you, Honorable Chen. You may answer the three questions, then we'll take another set. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I want to say to Mweshimua concerning your sisters, they were more innovative. And uh, they looked at the opportunity of uh, getting husbands on the other side. It wasn't an easy task, I believe. Um, so I want to go into answering the question, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start with the last one, where she asked me, Moshimiwa, about communication. Um, communicating with staff within the department calls that I have meetings with them on one to one. And all, having an open access, because I've been a leader in where I am, is one key aspect of communicating and ensuring that whatever policies that we have, whatever tasks that we have at hand, we are able to move fast and understand and implement in good time. So communicating with them would be through letters, through memos, um, and through also the meetings. And, what the, and one other aspect that I would emphasize is about the training, because training is a key aspect in making sure that all the information is understood and implemented in good time. Also on communicating with the county assembly, that would be through the reports, that I would be giving on uh, if appointed frequently so that we know the status of how the agriculture is because you know the climate is changing all the time and we have to manage these issues on day to day basis. So communicating with the assembly on the daily reports or uh, the monthly reports that are required and also informing the governor of uh, the situation in the county and in terms of agriculture because we are all focused on, um, on food safety and food security. That is key. Because without food then, no one can stay and say, I have a home. Um, one aspect about uh, food is that it makes people to settle and love their home. Um, you also asked that I highlight how I'll communicate the strategies, uh, communication strategies, both local and international. I really appreciate the aspect that I did uh, um, MSc in marketing. And that would be through the forums that we have both uh, the social media, we also have uh, communication in terms of uh, websites. We also have the trade fairs that we will participate in. And I would say even up to the wards where we have trade fairs to communicate and see the aspect of what we have. Baringo is known for the honey, which is organic honey. And uh, Baringo is also a geopark. It is marked by UNESCO as a geopark. How would you start to market our products? Uh, as a geopark, there is no beautiful place more than Baringo. It's the most beautiful place on earth. And the kind of food that we have will be a marketing aspect in terms of uh, the honey, the goat meat, and also the fish. We have the best fish in Lego, uh, Baringo. Um, harnessing that and marketing it such that uh, we are able now to store sun dry and have it for a rainy day and every time because all the time when the fish is sun dried and given that value, you know, looking at it, uh, adding value, it will enable every other person to access the fish. And we will not be talking of the ladies maybe going to the other side, but they will be eating fish, the goat meat, and enjoying the honey and the milk. Um, the other question was on the untapped uh, areas. I would want to look at uh, maybe crop by crop. Um, let me look, I would go to the crops. Um, we have coffee, we have uh, macadamia, we have uh, avocado, we have mangoes. Uh, looking at coffee, because it's the most traded uh, crop after oil, and Baringo that we afford in most areas to do coffee, I would encourage our farmers, and even encourage the county assembly to approve when we come in, uh, when approved, so that we get the planting material for the farmers. And within those three years that, uh, you know, the vision is that, it takes two and a half years and by that time, because we have a factory at Katimok, they would be able to mill uh, full capacity instead of maybe the less capacity that we have at the moment. Uh, also on macadamia, uh, macadamia, I'm told, frustrates monkeys. They are not able to eat the macadamia, especially in the wild there. So, and also the termites are not able to penetrate. So this is a very good crop for the lowlands, so that they are able to produce uh, the macadamia. And uh, even when they go looking for pasture, which we hope not that farmers would go f far away looking for pasture because we would want that they uh, grow their own pasture and uh, be sedentary in terms of looking after li the livestock. 
Avocado has gained a lot of importance of late, uh, and this is an area that we would also want to invest in. Uh, looking at the forest products, we have aloe vera. Aloe vera, um, as ladies in the cosmetic industry, we want uh, lotions that are enriched with aloe vera. We want the moringa, uh, and we also have the essential oil from the neem tree. A neem tree is very adaptable in all the areas, the high altitude and the low altitudes, and be able to get the essential oil from it. We also have cotton. Uh, we have a ginary in Salawa, uh, and I believe the Gary of Ale when we do the cotton, because all of us are dressed in, uh, and cotton is the best of all the clothes that we have. And uh, we have the BT cotton now that is so adaptable. And when we do the cotton and have them uh, ginned, would be able to uh, add value and, uh, and even get clothing uh, uh, marketed. We also have an agency that is dealing with the marketing of Kenya. These products that I've talked about and that they are from Baringo and that they are from a geopark, given that name, when marketed in the boots, that they go outside internationally marketing. I will request them because having worked with the government agencies all that time, that we'll have a table marked Baringo and even grow to a booth because you start when you're starting small with a table and then go to a booth and have more investors, more visitors coming to Baringo. Um, the other question was on key drivers, chairman, on how I would uh, uh, manage uh, the, the, or drive the department, is that every department has uh, the personnel and we have the HR personnel and policies that really govern how the staff would be managed. There is the organ of structure and the way of communication. And I believe when uh, uh, nominated now or approved, I would lead by example. And looking at my age, I think many issues would not really be a problem because I don't think there's a new thing on earth that would bother anyone that we cannot solve as a group or as a team. Because every team member has a way of contribution, looking at whatever they have come from. And uh, we have a focus and have one agenda in ensuring that we do service delivery fast and, and uh, effectively as a department. Are you through? Uh, this last one on food shortages. Yes, kind of wind up. Okay. Chairman, on food shortage, that is a key aspect that is affecting the whole world. When I counted the months that we have a dry season is, if it starts in October, it means by March that would be seven months. And I also looked at the countries that experience winter. They also have like seven months of winter. Um, having worked maybe in those sides of Meru, I realized there are some climates that are cold and dry. Ours is hot and dry. And the main issue now is to ensure that we have food storage maybe working with NCBB as a government agency. But my request even to our own people is that let's start by keeping food within our own homes to begin with. And also let's begin by being our own customers in ensuring that we secure food to last us those seven months. Because as I said, 1928 was where there was hunger, but also in 1961 that is where there was flood. So looking at the patterns and working together with the meteorological department, to ensure that we are able to get the data in good time, get uh, planting material in good time, and also train ourselves so that we get climate smart varieties that can even uh, grow within a short time and have them uh, stored. We also need to avoid losses. If we plant our crops and we lose them to termites and lose them to other aspects, or even human pests for that matter, because I experienced uh, Moshimiwa in Barwesa, a lot of theft on mangoes. If we can avoid the human pests on the other side, we would have more on our stores and get more income to the pockets of our farmers. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Rispa. Honorable uh, Kibet, you, you will tell us what happened in 1961 <laughs> when there was floods, so that you can tell us the story of 1961. And honorable members, as we were engaging, I received some questions from members of public. There's a friend of mine from Kampia Samaki, that's like Baringo, and he says I need to ask the nominee some three questions. The first one relates to fishing. As you know, like Baringo, or Kampia Samaki is like Baringo, 
and he's asking what's blue economy and how can Baringo County adopt blue economy concept? That's the first question. The second question is there's something called cage fishing that's being practiced in like in like, like Victoria. And this person is asking whether the same can be practiced in like Baringo and how can it be regulated? And how can the county government assist the hustlers or the low income people in setting up fish cage what do, what do fish cages or what's the name of that, that? Yeah, it's fish cages. Yes. Yeah. Fish cages in like, in, in Kambia Samaki. The other question relates to livestock. He's asking that Baringo is facing drought at the moment. Can let a nominee explain to us how we can harness the national livestock of OFTEC program that's being run by the national government? And the final question relates to in the first regime of His Excellency Kafana Cheboy, he established Baruesa and Loruk slaughterhouses. His Excellency, former governor Kiptis, established Maoi slaughterhouse. This concerned citizen from Kambia Samaki is asking, how is Baringo utilizing those slaughterhouses? And if yes or no, do we have an end end to end process where we will be able to use the slaughterhouses and get a market for the meat so that we don't have idle slaughterhouses and at the same time be able to generate income for our people. Any burning question? Because we are winding up from any member? Honorable Posialo, yours is the final question. Thank you, Chair. Madam yes, from your presentation, uh, it's clear that you you stay in Kitale, right? Uh, I worked in Kitale, and for 15 years we made a home, but I'm also working in Nairobi. Yes. Uh, and my home is Baringo. Where do you stay currently? In Baringo. Or Where specifically? Uh, um, currently I'm in Nairobi. Currently in Nairobi. Yes. That's nice. Now, we have a challenge in Baringo where... Uh, from our previous regimes, all the CCs used to reside outside Baringo County, and that has become a challenge. And there's a public outcry that uh, our executive are using a lot of money in transportation, uh, commuting from their home to the uh, uh, county headquarters for their work. And I don't know how will you handle that because it's. Now that you stay outside Baringo, are you going to be commuting and eating our money on transportation? Two. Two. No one needs money. Chairman, chairman. No one needs money. I will throw, okay. <laughs> now, my second question is, uh, there are so many irrigation schemes that were established in the first regime that do not exist. One is Cheraik and uh, two is Muguyuni irrigation scheme. From uh, the previous uh, auditor's report, those irrigation schemes do not exist. So how will you ensure that uh, the people of Mogotio get the value of their money? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Rispa, I'll give you seven minutes, four minutes to answer the questions, and three minutes to make your closing remarks or to wind up to your wrap-up? Thank you, Chair. Uh, if nominated, it means I reside here in Baringo. So there would be no question about that, and I don't know how much money you have for me to eat. And I wouldn't eat that money, I would put it on service. So I assure you, if appointed, I would be here in Cabernet. And my home also is Bartabwa and Barwesa. Um, the irrigation schemes that have been set up, and they are not in use, I would say I would take the first opportunity is to visit those sites and find out why they were not completed, were they silted, um, is it due to siltation, uh, is it due to whatever issues that might be there. Because the focus now is to be on irrigated agriculture as opposed to rain-fed agriculture. That would be given the attention it deserves so that we have more acreage under irrigation. Um, there was the other question also from the public on uh, the blue economy. 
uh, I would say fish and uh, uh, cage fishing or fish farming is very important and Lake Baringo being a fresh water lake uh, would be so suitable. My uh, internship was done in Maseno and we would enjoy a lot of fish from Lake Victoria and it's the same way that uh, I would request our uh, Baringo residents to you know like uh, get used to eating fish because they are the first market from this fish. Uh, it would be good that uh, instead of marketing it outside Baringo, we become the first consumers of fish. We become our first market in terms of cooking and cooking the different styles that need to be done. And so the blue economy would really give us a lot of uh, mileage because we need the protein. And giving attention to the fish farming in terms of the gauge, the getting the fish, uh, uh, the fingerlings, and increasing uh, the number of fish and the species in Lake Baringo would uh, in fact earn us more money in that way. So being part of the areas that I will give focus, that would be the first area that I would do is to uh, visit and even add value. It becomes one of the value chains that would give us more income and put more wealth. The hustlers in that region would get more income to their pockets. Baringo being um, a drought area and we are facing drought at the moment, Chair, uh, the national off-tech program means a lot of negotiation from our part. And the other aspect from us pastoralists is to anticipate the seasons and get our livestock taken early enough. When we keep our livestock longer until they are so weak and they are not being able to be taken at that time, it means even the person buying it may not get so much value out of that livestock. And this is my desire that we be able to sell livestock that have weight and that would give value, and even the hides that we get uh, would be of value of making other products other than just, you know, taking to, you know, the last end where to Naokoa. No, we should be able to sell the livestock when it is at its prime. One of the livestock uh, champion at Kenya Seed earned 1.3 million shillings, the last ASK show in Nairobi. And that is a desire that we get there uh, by working together maybe with uh, Kenya Seed or uh, ADC to see we get better breeds that can withstand the drought and you able to give us more weight in terms of the life weight and also more dairy milk. And uh, getting other breeds, even for the uh, camels, getting from other areas so that we don't get a lot of inbreeding uh, from our camels. Or the sheep and goats get proper or improved breeds so that our farmers can adopt that. Um, there was the question of slaughterhouses. This goes also with us training our farmers if approved as the, uh, the CEC, this is an area that we would say, if you have a sale yard and the livestock don't come, then you'll not be able to use that yard. If you have a slaughterhouse and there's no animal to be slaughtered, it, you will not be able to use that slaughterhouse. So it's upon us now as the, C the group in agriculture, the team in agriculture, to ensure that we have livestock at all stages of growth so that when one group is now sold, we have another group also coming in, and we make our slaughterhouses operational throughout. Know that we, say, you know, we have like a quarter that we don't have livestock to, to, to slaughter. Um, in Nairobi, I buy my meat from uh, KMC, where they refrigerate. My desire uh, as the CEC is to have uh, refrigerated uh, pickups where, from the upper towers, we are using the refrigerated funds to take meat to the upper centers. Most of the areas are becoming up and centers, and uh, they have a test in terms of the kind of products that they, they do. So it's to meet those standards and be able to meet that demand in terms of having the package of meat already delivered to the door of the farmer or the customer. If they want the saloon, if they want the ribs, we package it in the kind of uh, uh, portion that they want or the part of the animal that they desire. If it is the oxtail, from their apatos and have them... Uh, uh, working well. I know Maui is not ready yet and it will be ready when the time is due, when the completion is done and it will be able to uh, service the farmers and we will also have meat to export now. We get more value when we export meat than the live animals. Uh, Chairman, uh, my closing remarks. You said I give my closing remarks? Yes, Rispa. Thank you very much. I really want to appreciate uh, the appointing authority for giving me this opportunity. My colleagues know me as a very passionate person. Um, I eat my targets, and thus the promotion I've been receiving and being uh, transferred from one area to the other. 
in terms of meeting the needs and uh, meeting the, uh, the targets that has been assigned to me. As the team leader of the agriculture, I believe the areas that we would give focus to is the food security, the sustainable agriculture, and also having our products marketed. We would like the whole world to come to Baringo because it's a geopark and see what we eat in Baringo and see the beauty. We want when our ladies are dancing or the gentlemen for that matter singing the music, they sing about the food. We don't want them getting choked because the voice is not there, they've not eaten. We want them to eat well so that when they sing and dance, everybody would say, I would want to stay in Baringo. Uh, I appreciate also that we have the resilience of farmers in Baringo. We've had many droughts uh, year in and it's cyclic. So as the uh, leader of uh, agriculture, I would want us to see the patterns. How has it been? And even mitigate and adopt by getting varieties that are suitable for our lands in ensuring that we have food in our basket. And more than anything else, get more wealth, create wealth through the incomes that our farmers get. Then we will not have issues to do with uh, health, maybe have issues to do with school fees and all the fundraising. It means a farmer would say, uh, I have my mangoes to sell, I have coffee, I'm expecting payment, I have my avocado, and the kind of food that we serve would also be quality food. The other area, Chairman, that really bothers me is when I look at the statistics and I realize that we have many malnourished children. And I used to ask myself, why are our children malnourished? Then I realized it's because when the pastoralists move their livestock from the homestead looking for pasture, it's because there's nothing that remains at home so that you know they can be given to the children. By getting better breeds of uh, goats and maybe uh, you know uh, making the farmers secure food resources, then our children, that malnutrition level would go down. And I also saw the, you know, the, the averages for the, the mortality for mothers. You know, women, when they deliver, uh, when they are not fed, they get weak over a period of time. And that is a real aspect that we have to take care of by ensuring that there is food at all levels for the young, the old, and the, you know, the very active members, the, meeting the kind of food requirement for the, for the nation or for the county. That is my desire, that we move from the level where we are at to the desired level. You have level. 30 seconds. Chairman, I think I would smile for those 30 seconds. I would smile for those 30 seconds. That is so short a time. But thank you very much. Thank you for giving me uh, a time to state what my desire is and give my passion that I would love us to be at the level where we are food secure. Thank you. Thank you, Rispa, for time management. We are not doing well. We, we exceed the time by 13 minutes. However, we want to appreciate the time. It was a serious engagement. If this house proves, if this committee approves you, you will be able to engage with the agricultural committee. And I expect you, the same way you are punctual in attending this meeting, and you did not request for readjustment, that when the time will come, you will not tell us that you have another engagement on that day, and you will request for another appointment. Just the same way you are prompting coming for this meeting for this appointment, you will be prompt enough in the engagement that the, co the committee on agriculture will be able to summon you or to call you for the same. Because of time, we wish you all the best. This committee will retreat and write its report. If they will approve you, we'll be able, we shall work together. If they will not, then we are sure that will, there's another opportunity for you another time. Thank you, Rispa. Have a nice, have a is it still morning or afternoon? Yes, I enjoy the rest of the morning. Thank you, Chair. And I believe they will approve me. I love working with this team. And I'll give my best, Chair. Yes. Mr. Topole, you can come for the documents and hand it over to her. At this point, we have come to the end. Have a, have a nice day.